بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم تو آج ہمارا امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک ہم اسٹارٹ کرنے جا رہے ہیں دیٹ از دی ون دی امپورٹنٹ برانچ ان دا اسپیکٹروسکوپی کال ایز این ایم آر اسپیکٹروسکوپی بہت ہی امپورٹنٹ ہے چاہے کمپٹیٹیو ایگزام ہو یا کوئی بھی ایگزام ہو تو این ایم آر اسپیکٹروسکوپی بیسکلی اٹ مینس این اسٹینڈس فار نیوکلیئر نیوکلیئر ایم اسٹینڈس فار میگنیٹک میگنیٹک And R stands for the resonance. So, पहले हम इस नेम को थोड़ा अंडरस्टैंड करने की कोशिश करें. Nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. As the word says, nuclear means this basically deals with the nucleus of an atom or a molecule. What are the nucleuses? It deals with that. It takes takes the information from the nucleus. So it deals with the nucleus. Magnetic means it involves magnetic moment. It has something to do with the magnetic moment. Our magnetism is involved. And the resonance means, a term called resonance, that we will explain in the end. Fine. Now, in this spectroscopy, so what actually uh, we do at the end, our aim is that we will have the structural elucidation. Particularly organic compounds, so, so it's actually the application is structural elucidation. To know the structure of the molecule, the structural elucidation. And this is one of the advanced techniques as far as this confirming the structure of molecules along with the XRD, X-ray diffraction single crystal. So that's the main portion, fine. Now, so it deals with the nucleus. So we say that, uh, so what basically happens in this case is that once the molecules are exposed to the uh, radiation, since it's a spectroscopy, so the molecules are exposed to the radiation. So we have the radiations here and then you have matter here, let's say the molecules. Now in this case, the, the radiations which are used, the frequency, that's the micro, this is the radio waves, fine. So we use the radiation of frequency in the range of radio waves, fine. So we use the radio waves as far as, their, uh, the, as, far as the radiation is used here, fine. So the matter absorbs these radiations and then it leads to the transitions in the nucleus. So now here, this is the rotation spectroscope, transition occurs between the rotation energy levels. Vibration spectroscope may transition occurs between the vibration energy levels. Electronic spectroscope may transition occurs between the electronic energy levels. Now in this case, the transition occurs between the nuclear energy levels. So we have transition occurring between. So for absorption of radiation, microwave, this is the radio waves. Transition occurs between nuclear energy levels. Nuclear energy levels. So inside the nucleus we have energy levels basically. Energy levels. Fine. Now, inside the nucleus, so first of all, we see the transition occurs with the nuclear energy levels once the molecule absorbs the radio waves or appropriate frequency. Fine. So the transition occurs. So in this case, the nuclear energy levels are basically, in this case, they are created by the application of external magnetic field. So, We'll make a diagram here, so nuclear energy levels are created, let us make it like a magnet here. They are created by the application of external magnetic field, let us say this is north, let us say this is south, so this is the direction of applied field. Let's keep it at zero, the strength of applied magnetic field, somewhere you can see B0 also. So here the energy levels are created by the application of external magnetic field means that say the nucleus is simplest nucleus that's H1 that's proton fine so it has one nucleus this is mass number so it has one proton so the number of protons is one and there's no neutron the neutron is zero inside the nucleus so it's proton one that means the spin is half so we see it is it can be either plus half or it can be either minus half now the spin is only one. Once this nucleus is placed inside the external magnetic field, which is having this is the 
the, the direction of the magnetic field. This is the direction of the applied magnetic field. So this nucleus will orient itself. Find this nucleus. Since uh, it will orient itself either in this form or in the, this form. Tick. So it will orient itself. Now the number of orientations is given by 2 into the spin plus 1. Spin value of the nucleus. So it has two orientations. It, it can either orient itself clockwise, this nucleus, and it can hold anticlockwise. Now, when there was no magnetic field, then the spins were oriented in different directions. So net result was no, not a, no direction at all, zero. But once they are placed in the external magnetic field, now the spin will orient itself. Now, it can orient if it orients in this in this fashion. So this is clockwise. Now, if it orients in this fashion. It generates a magnetic field since it, nucleus as a charge it generates a magnetic field. Now, this magnetic field and this magnetic vector they are in the same direction. So what that does, it leads to the interaction that results in lowering of energy of the system. So this becomes the stable state. So if, if this nucleon, if nucleus orients like this anticlockwise, so this magnetic field and this they are opposite. So it leads to the repulsion. That means now this state is a higher energy state. So the molecule will prefer to be in this state now. So we can say that a nucleus, a proton, has two spin states, two energy levels. Number one here, number two here. It's the high energy state, let us say it is E2, it's the here high energy is E1. So the nucleus will stay ideally here. Now, once we irradiate the sample, now very important that in the NMR spectroscopy that the source that should be perpendicular, the radiation should be perpendicular to the applied magnetic field. So that should be perpendicular, fine. Let us irradiate this system with a radio wave frequency. So this, the molecule will absorb, the nucleus will absorb this energy, so it will go to the higher energy level. Going to the higher energy state means now there will be inversion of spin. So this phenomena of inversion of spin, meaning the, the nucleon going from low energy state to the high energy state upon absorption of suitable frequency of radiation, this is basically called as the resonance. Fine. So this is called as basically the resonance. So that's why we say nuclear magnetic resonance that it deals with the nucleus and then in the application in the presence of external magnetic field and then when we use the source of radiation perpendicular to it the nucleus goes transition from the lower energy state to the high energy state so this is basically called as the resonance fine so the resonance is only possible in this energy gap is equivalent to the frequency of incoming radiation that's one thing now the second view which I am going to send is this nucleus is a spin fine Ye jo nucleus hota hai, it has a, so the nucleus has a spin. So this is a spinning nucleus. And it is observed that this nucleus, it spins like the top. It spins like a top. Ek lattu ki tarah spin karta rata hai. Jaysi agar isko maana jaya ki this is the external magnetic field is direction mein. Fine? This is direction mein. So this nucleus, it spins around it. So it, it travels like a cone, fine. So it's like spins like this. So now that means it is spinning with a frequency. It has some velocity, angular velocity. Now write down. So that was the resonance, basically, the transition from one state to another state. Resonance ka aurik meaning hai. That I uh, will try to understand here. So. We see this nucleus is spinning with a frequency, so we have angular velocity that is 2 pi and uh, frequency, fine? So angular velocity is given by 2 pi, so this spinning nucleus, spinning top, in the gram state. That is your angular frequency, fine? Ab, uh, now, it has been observed that if you the, the strength of external magnetic field is greater, the, the, uh, this nucleus will have greater angular velocity. So this is directly proportional to the 
so this is directly proportional to the applied field, strength of applied magnetic field, singular velocity. So we'll say it is equal to constant gamma. So this is called as gyro magnetic ratio. Fine. Gyro magnetic ratio. So we have equation that angular velocity of the spinning nucleus that is direct applied field and this is this by this. Now this omega angular velocity is equal to 2 pi nu. So we say if we compare this 2 pi nu that is equivalent to gyro magnetic ratio. So this is the frequency of the spinning nucleus. So that is equal to h gamma by 2 pi. So this is another important relation. The frequency of the spinning nucleus directly depends on the applied field. So if the applied field strength of this magnet is more, it will spin. The frequency of this is more. So this is called as the uh, the classic the classic is called as Larmor precession frequency. Larmor precession frequency. Precession frequency. It's called a Larmor precession frequency. The Larmor precession frequency होती है वो जो spinning nucleus एक state में होता है जैसे यहाँ हमने कहा कि ground state is clockwise state is more stable तो इसकी वो इट इस तरह से cone की शक्ल में है ट्राइ इट ट्राइवर्स इस कोन इस velocity से घूमता रहता है like a top keeping this perpendicular this axis magnetic field as an axis that's to that तो इसकी जो velocity इसकी जो frequency है that's basically called Larmor precession frequency so that depends on the magnitude of that frequency depends on the applied field that's more it's come out of frequency very other okay now classically other is go up your transition key car now the jews key of frequency at that frequency should be equal to the frequency of applied field to yeah giant ac is going to start carry that larval precision and frequency if that matches the applied field frequency the molecule undergoes transition or if the frequency of the applied radiation if it's equal to the energy gap, it leads to the transition from ground to excited state or it leads to the spin flipping. So this is basically called the resonance. So the nucleus undergoes transition in presence of external magnetic field and the source of radiation. So this is basically called nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Now if I read it that uh, what actually this frequency means, we say that the precisional frequency may be defined as the number of revolutions per second made by the magnetic vector of the nucleus around the external field. So, ये कितनी ये जो vector था इसका nucleus का इसके विद्रास वेक्टर में how many revolutions it will make per second. So that's called precisional frequency. Or we can define it in the different way that is the frequency of electromagnetic radiations that is necessary to induce the transition from this state to this state. It's also called Larmor precision frequency. So this is the basics of the NMR spectroscopy. And we have important things. Yeah, that new thing. Our now one nucleus to hold any molecule. We have many nuclei here, which are usually randomly oriented. Yeah, pe. This is randomly oriented. This is. I pay on this is clean. Clean. So usually a nucleus, a molecule, organic molecule has so many nucleus, we don't have a bare nucleus. So usually the spins are oriented randomly, usually. Again, once we apply the external magnetic field, now they have the orientation. Now orientation may be possible like some of the spins will sit here, they will occupy the high-end state. But most of the spins will definitely occupy the ground state, because ground state can energy is very low. So when we have spins available here, then only transition is possible. Fine. So most of these spins will stay here. And under the application of external magnetic field, they will orient themselves. So once they orient themselves, then it leads to the creation of magnetic field in this state. So we can say that basically, in our spectroscopy, the energy levels are created by the application of magnetic field. अगर आप आप मैग्नेटिक फील्ड रिमूव करोगे तो विल बी न्यू एनर्जी लेवल्स या हम ऐसे कह सकते हैं। सो इन अनदर टर्म वी कैन से दैट सो इनिशियली न्यूक्लियस में वे नो एनर्जी स्टेट्स हैव सेम एनर्जी दैट डिजेनरेट फाइन लेकिन जब हम मैग्नेटिक फील्ड अप्लाई किया सो वी हैव नाउ एनर्जी स्टेट्स प्रेजेंट तो वी कैन से व्हेन बी वाज़ 
some books write b if h0 is 0 so the energy levels are degenerate you can see here both almost you cannot differentiate them so when this i remember this b again when h0 is not 0 when it has some value applied magnetic field then there is creation of energy states even e2 so then there is the energy gap here and then you can make the nucleus to transit from this to this state with the help of external source of radiations and that that's called resonance fine so this is the basics of nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy now there's a some other question then i hope we can actually end up with this uh, the basic lecture those may kya sari nucleus do all nuclei show do all nuclei they will show this this nuclear mag presence behavior no for that a nucleus has to be it should have some magnetic moment it should have some magnetic moment so those nucleus which have a magnetic moment so they will be active in the nmr they can be studied through nmr spectroscopy that means to say that nucleus ke paas ek magnetic moment hona chahiye uske liye how can we say that ab hamare paas ab nucleus to bada tough hai so how can we see that a particular nucleus is a magnetic moment uske liye ek rule hai for example we have simplest nucleus it is h11 atomic number and mass number so atomic number is number of protons here for our purpose let's forget the electrons so this is neutrons plus protons second example h21 it's isotopes then so one proton but two mass number that was neutron is what added okay we'll take one more example carbon 6 12 one more example carbon 6 13 so here six protons that means here six protons six neutrons makes 12 and this isotope of carbon six protons here six protons seven neutrons fine we can take one more example of uh, compound like uh, boron okay right? so boron 10 so boron 10 So this is beryllium boron carbon. So this is basically the five ten five eleven hydrogen helium lithium beryllium boron. So it's basically five ten, and this is five eleven. So this is some of the common nuclei. So here are five neutrons. This five protons, six neutrons makes eleven. Five and ten. Fine. Now there's a rule that if either your atomic number, this this one. Or this mass number, if at least at least one of them is odd, so if at least I will say either either the atomic number or mass number value is odd, at least remember this. दोनों भी हो सकते हैं. Then that nucleus is magnetically active, either atomic number or mass number at least. So that is said to be active in the NMR spectroscopy. Let us see here. So both are odd. That means it's, it's fitting the criteria is active. It's active. Now here look at this. Both are even, so it is not active in the NMR spectroscopy. Now it's active. So the carbon thirteen isotope is active. Now you can see here one or both odd. So one odd. That means both are active. At least one should be active. Then that isotope is. Can be studied through NMR spectroscopy. Let us have example of fluorine nineteen. This is another important isotope you study fluorine spectroscopy. It's obviously active. Then we have phosphorus thirty one, another important active in the NMR spectroscopy. Take so if you look at this, it is a magnetic moment, and this value is one by two nuclear spin value. Its value is one, most common studied. Same is the case. We have certain nucleus like uh, we have uh, carbon thirteen. Now that carbon thirteen is half. Another important component, carbon thirteen. So its value is half. So in general, I should say that a simple rule, very very simple, that either you should have at least one either atomic number or mass number of of the a given nucleus. That should be odd, 
If that's all, you can take the nucleus and you can study it through NMR spectroscopy. So this is all about the basics of the nuclear magnetic spectroscopy. Why the important criteria that nucleus should be magnetic? Its magnetic spin value should be greater than or equal to half because the minimum possible spin is half. It should be at least either greater than nuclear spin of that particular nucleus. It should be either equal to half or greater than half. It is said to be magnetically active. For that, we can directly check the nucleus. If it's either atomic number or mass number is 1, or both are odd or at least 1, so it's said to be active in the NMR spectroscopy, which can be studied, and we can determine the structure of the compound of nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Again, we have, we are dealing with the nucleus, we are using the magnetic field, and they are transiting the nucleus from one state to the state, or we are basically getting the spin from the ground state, flip it in the excited state with the help of the radiation in the radio wave region. So this is basically all the nuclear magnetic resonance. This is all for the day. So if you have any questions, so please do not hesitate. You can actually contact me here again. M-A-K-A-N-D-C-H-E-M at gmail.com So please do not hesitate. If you, have, if you want any important lectures to be recorded, particularly at UG level or PG level or any lectures regarding net gate competitive exams CSIR or any important examples but please write me on this email so I'll be happy to prepare a lecture to get benefited you people so till then stay blessed solve for this